Hello, I'm astrologer Patrick Arundel and welcome. Today I'm going to do a deep dive into the inauguration of President Biden, which occurs on the 20th of January 2021 at 12 midday Eastern, uh, Eastern time. I'm also going to look back at the inauguration of President Trump, which occurred on uh, January the 19th, 2016. And I'm going to show you what's going to characterize this new regime, but also what characterized some of President Trump's. Now, if you're new to my channel, I'd be honored if you would subscribe. Please click or tap on the bell notification symbol. Now, when we look at an event, exactly when that event occurs, it's just like a birthday. It's like your natal chart, your nativity. So this characterization of both men's uh, presidencies is so influential. The moment they're sworn in is incredibly powerful. Now, I'm not going to take a, a partisan view towards any candidate, so I'm going to try to be as objective as possible. Please bear with me on that. If you would like me to analyse your natal birth chart and to show you how your personal journey is developing and the opportunities you can grasp, please check out the link beneath this video where you can book a one-to-one -one with me. Alternatively, if you'd like to have a printed report and know what's coming for the next 12 months and also get your character analysis as well if you've yet to have that done, you can get this based on your time, date and place of birth, totally unique to you. Get 30% off by seeing the link beneath this video. So here we can see on the screen the event today. So I'm just going to run you through this. The sun is in the sign of Aquarius. Now when President Trump was inaugurated, it was just still in the sign of Capricorn. So that's one big difference. Capricornian energy is much more to do with, uh, to do with traditional values and it can be to do with business. And sustaining uh, the uh, continuity in situations. Now Aquarius energy does welcome traditionality. It's not true to say that Aquarius is all to do with the future, but it is to do with the collective. And you can see that we have the Sun and also Saturn and also Jupiter and also Mercury all in the sign of Aquarius. Now why is this particularly significant? Well it's significant because Saturn is the co-ruler of Aquarius Therefore, it's at home in the sign of Aquarius. It's the co-regent along with Uranus. But also Mercury, the planet of communication, is exalted in the sign of Aquarius. This is, means it can really flourish. And it also rules the second decan of Aquarius, so the second 10 degrees. So if you have your birthday uh, from around about uh, the end of January through to the first 10 days of February, you're going to be someone who's probably quite skillful at communication. Now Jupiter of course is very much to do with growth, optimism, education, higher values. But in this particular chart we can see that the ascendant is in the sign of Taurus. Now it was for uh, President Bush as well at 14 degrees. So we do have a square between uh, the sign of uh, Taurus, the ascendant, and Mercury the planet of communication. But because the ascendant is in uh, the sign of Taurus, it means that this cluster of energy, the stellium of energy in Aquarius, is in the 10th house. The 10th house is very much to do with authority, it's to do with management, it can be to do with government. It's a kind of Capricornian vibe. And you can see that we also have the planet of power, Pluto, in the sign of Capricorn still, where it will be through to 2.23, part-time, then goes to Aquarius part-time, back into Capricorn before going into Aquarius for a much longer stretch from 2.24. We also have Venus, the planet of relating, in the sign of Capricorn. They're in the ninth house, very much to do with international affairs. Now, we also have this clustering of energy, and I must apologise for the sound. We've got some building work going on at the moment. I'm not in my usual office. Now, you can also see that we also have a cluster of energy in the 12th house of this inauguration. And the 12th house is very much to do with what's less obvious. It's more psychological. 
but it can also be to do with hidden enemies and it can be to do with threats and I think having Uranus conjunct Mars in the 12th house is an incredibly turbulent potential influence. We also have the moon in the 12th house which can be quite withdrawn at times, it's not its most dynamic location. Of course it's on a very critical point at 29 degrees but we also have Chiron in Aries as well. So this cluster of 12th house energy, very psychological, quite subterranean, but the most critical part of this is that Mars and uh, Uranus in their very turbulent combination, Uranus is about change but in the sign of Taurus it's in its fall so it's not its best location, Taurus energy is very resistant to change and Mars is, is about power but it's about action but it's about action that's not all, always thought through very well. So I feel that this represents this presidency's enemies. I can only be really truthful about this and if we look at the chart here if uh, I was doing a reading with a client I would definitely see that uh, the ascendant was square Mercury as it is within four degrees but Mars and Uranus are square the Sun within six which is a bit broader but that points towards if we think about the Sun as being the first house as I would work with Sun sign astrology it means these guys are in the fourth house in Taurus of home so home family country and the fourth house is also very much to do with the USA in terms of the uh, style of, of uh, of focus on creating a great deal of material success but in a very protective sometimes defensive way in terms of an emotional way of being so having these two turbulent influences squaring with the Sun points towards turbulence on the home front also Saturn and Jupiter are in more uh, are in tighter right angles with these two so Jupiter square Mars actually can be quite optimistic it gives us the sense that we can overcome challenges and it's the same really with Uranus square Jupiter it pushes us to be a bit more experimental so I think we are going to see some new agendas coming through but the collective energy in Aquarius points towards uh, thinking of the entire the entire picture so it's about the big picture Aquarius energy at its best is very much about community it's about it's about the people it's about how we connect with one another on a collective basis and it can be very much to do with cooperation so that cooperation is something that I think President Biden will seek to establish but we can't underestimate the fact that he will still have power because Pluto is right bang on the 10th house so that gives him great power and that power is going to be used around the law the ninth house and also foreign affairs also because Venus the planet of relating is in the ninth house of foreign affairs and forging a very nice link to Neptune in the 11th house of humanity very Aquarius you are going to see a lot more diplomacy uh, on the international stage from Mr. Biden. Now the midpoint, if we take the midpoint between uh, the two, uh, the moon at 29 degrees in the sign of Aries and the sign where the sun's located of Aquarius is actually in Pisces. So the balance of energies is very much to do with trying to find a way to heal I feel will that be possible well the big challenge is that clash between the Sun Saturn Jupiter and Mars and Uranus and Mercury and the ascendant but also the North Node here in the sign of Gemini is in a right angle with Neptune and I think that this is this continuing distortion around reality so there's going to be a fight a big fight that's going to go on to gain ascendancy around facts and figures now the ascendant of this chart is actually Scorpio and of course Mr Biden is a Scorpio so I see that this is a chart which is going to try to collectively uh, lead 
in a way that is more traditional than people might imagine, but it will put the emphasis on communication and inclusivity. Now that's very much a democrat principle, as I said I'm not commenting from a political viewpoint, but from what I understand it is the more liberal leaning party. But I think this cluster of energy in the 12th house does point to the fact that Mr Biden is going to be up against it, because if we look in terms of the emotional uh, placement of this chart, the moon, that is being squared by Pluto and also the 10th house. So. I think there are going to be some quite rabid attacks on him and anything to do with his past, whether it's to do with his son's dodgy dealings in the Ukraine, um, his links with other overseas countries, they're all going to be ferreted out by those people who uh, want to expose him um, and I don't think it's going to be easy for him. But I think in terms of trying to create a more constructive environment well, it's more based on factuality and more based on inclusivity. inclusivity. This is a very positive chart, but I do feel that Mr. Biden is going to have some very strident enemies. And Mars conjunct Uranus and Pluto can uh, square, uh, and also square in Saturn, Jupiter, and, and the Sun, but also Pluto square in the Moon, does point towards the danger to Mr. Biden could be with his life and I don't say that with any pleasure at all astrologers don't like making these kind of uh, predictions because we're very sensitive to the fact that he his life is his life his family will be concerned about him and a lot of people will be willing him on but a lot of people will feel that he's achieved an ascendancy uh, in a way which they don't feel was absolutely clear uh, I'm not getting into that, that's just the impression I get. So we are going to see a lot of psychological turbulence, plotting, uh, a potential attempt on his life I feel with Mars conjunct Uranus, squaring Jupiter and Saturn. Any astrologer would see this. Now let's have a look at President Trump's inauguration. Because that actually had the Sun also in the 10th house, but of course it was in Capricorn, which is very much more traditional, because he uh, came to the presidency one day before. Uh, so the sun on that particular year hadn't moved into Aquarius. And you can see that he also had Pluto conjunct Mercury, now in the ninth house. When people have Pluto conjunct Mercury, opposite Mercury, square Mercury in a natal chart, they can often have trenchant views. In other words, be very, very... Uh, strident about expressing their opinion. So Pluto is about power, Mercury is very much about the message and it's also about the news media and of course the ninth house governs uh, the distribution of information so that's very interesting. Also in this chart Saturn, the planet of structure, was in the eighth house of finances. So I think from my outside perspective, one of the things that President Trump has done very well is cut corporation tax and that and push back against some importations that are coming from overseas, which are not regulated by the financial markets in the same way. So that means they're much cheaper. That's been costing American jobs for a very long time. And because of that, he has worked very hard at resources. So to have Venus the planet that doesn't just govern relationships, it governs money, in the sign of Sagittarius, which is about expansion, and also having Saturn there, which is very much about discipline, in the eighth house of long-term resources. This is where he's done very well, boosting jobs, boosting employment, uh, becoming, uh, seeing uh, the world much more from a USA-centric viewpoint, which of course is going to be popular, but there's nothing wrong with that, because there has been a passive creep, I feel, uh, of the power of China particularly. And I think, you know, obviously people would say that he's had investors from China for years and so forth. It's very opaque, isn't it, you know, with politicians. As I said, I'm not making any comments on anyone uh, in a personal context. Now, the ascendant of this chart was also in Taurus. And uh, the fascinating thing was that the North Node, which is very much to do with the direction of travel, was conjunct Jupiter in the fifth house. So this is this kind of um, uh, very spirited 
uh, personality that he's brought to the role. Uh, you know, whatever the knockbacks, it seems that Trump always seems to have an answer, goes on the attack. And these two guys were forging a very strong trine with the sun in the earthy Capricorn. So there's a lot of earth, the part of fortune uh, was in the sign of, uh, of Pisces, a pi pi sign of Virgo. But of course, when he came to uh, uh, be inaugurated, Neptune uh, was in Pisces by then, it had been since 2002. It's moved on since then and it is opposite now, his part of fortune, which is interesting. Um, now the midpoint in this chart is one degrees Aries. So he did actually have uh, a, a decent uh, relationship between his ascendant and also Pluto in terms of just being about four degrees away. So again, that conviction, so there's a lot of conviction politics and the moon, unlike Joe Biden, where it's in the fiery Aries, just, uh, Donald Trump's moon was in the sign that governs his sign of Gemini. But I think the thing that really marks out this chart for me is the fact that Mars, the planet of drive and individuality, was in Scorpio, which is very much to do with resources. But look how close it is to the seventh house. People who have Mars on the seventh house have usually more uh, difficult times when it comes to having their relationships because they do tend to be very much more for forceful and because Scorpio itself is a very, obviously Mars uh, is the traditional ruler of Scorpio, so to have Mars in this location so close to the Ascendant, it's just tucked up behind, it's in the sixth house of details, but I feel that this is the very defensive, aggressive, attacking tone in all relationships. So advisors seem to have come and go, gone every five minutes. Whether you're a Trump fan or not, that is a fact. Now also, we had a very positive link between Saturn and Uranus in this natal chart, suggesting that some of the stimulus that he tried to create was based on new technologies and that in itself, I think, has been quite positive. But much more challenging for me is that Saturn is square Chiron and it's also square broadly at the, site, at the planet of Neptune. So this is where fact has been stranger than fiction, in my humble opinion. So I feel there's been an onslaught on facts. And that, depending again on your politics, could mean that you feel that I have an agenda but I just have seen facts checked time after time. And also, if you see where Uranus is in the 12th house, it's a very restless place to have Uranus. If you're a Gemini at the moment, you've got Uranus in your 12th house, and you may be feeling very much on edge. And actually, for someone like yourself, who's generally upbeat and bubbly, maybe a little bit more insecure, much more conscious of where you can trust people. So. Trust was a massive issue for Trump all through his presidency, and guess what? Uranus is square in Mercury, square in Pluto. So, but in the twelfth house, ninth house is the message, the truth. But I think this, in very impulsive way of communicating through Twitter, through social media, the microblog insight, meant that Trump was quite aggressive, Mars on the descendant, but sometimes very reactive. And I think a lot of it did come from a point of fear, in my honest opinion. And we can also see that Venus, the planet of relating, was square in the North Node and also square in Jupiter. So that's a lot of exaggeration. That's the kind of bragging. Uh, everything's bigger, better. And Trump does have that in his natal chart, actually, because he has Chiron conjunct Jupiter in the second house in Libra. So people who have Chiron conjunct Jupiter often have a real need to big themselves up, the gold taps. Um, but that's really what characterized this, uh, uh, this presidency. Also Saturn is broadly opposite the moon. So that leads to a kind of cold, very critical because the moon in Gemini is very detached. It's not very emotional. So that Saturn opposite moon often led to quite spiteful, pokey type of communication. So, but there were some great strengths in terms of the economy, in terms 
of his understanding that you have to push back and put the interest as he saw it, uh, protect America first. So the America first agenda with the pugnacious combination of Mercury conjunct Pluto and the uh, Midheaven conjunct the Sun as uh, uh, President Biden will have as well, so that's the power of office, uh, that's very much to the fore. But I think there is the potential here for very urgent communications without necessarily always thinking things through and there's a great deal of aggression that's coming from this chart. Um, I've actually put the charts together in a by will so you can see them side by side. Um, well there's Trump, I thought I'd done that, here we go, here's Biden. So there you can see the charts, uh, a little bit different, so Pluto for Biden just two degrees from the midheaven, whereas Trump's was about five degrees. So. I do feel that Biden will achieve a lot more on the international stage. I think Trump's uh, tendency to pull out of everything, it, it, it doesn't really work in my opinion because you can't influence things if you're not, you score political points with your supporters because they feel that you're standing up for their interests and pushing back, but the problem with it is that you can't influence the World Health Authority, you can't influence the climate lobby if you're not taking part. So those are the two charts together and we're just coming back now to uh, Biden and yeah, you can see that this is going to be uh, uh, a presidency much more to do with consensus. It's much, much less aggressive from him. It's much more inclusive. It's going to be much more constructive, I feel. Um, but I do feel that in terms of his enemies, and I do think they're going to be home-based enemies primarily, it's going to be a big job for him to unite the nation. So I hope that gives you a little bit of a flavour. I didn't want to go into uh, gigantic detail. As I said, I've tried to be uh, as fair as possible. Obviously it's easier to speak about Trump in a way for a Brit because I had four years of observing him on the news, whereas you know, I know a little bit about Joe Biden. I know he's a career politician. I know that won't speak to many Americans who don't like that. And that's why they really liked Trump, because they felt they took, he took on the establishment. And he kind of really understood people who had lost their jobs in the hinterland over many years. But I have seen, you know, obviously unemployment has dropped, which is brilliant. And he has tried to take on drug importation, which is brilliant. Um, but America has always been about opportunity and I think the Trump era has kind of brought up the whole issue of racism generally but I think a lot of that is to do with illegal immigration and I do feel that if President Obama for example had tried to do some of the things I'm not talking about the war or you know caging women and children in an internment camp but if he tried to do some of the things that Trump had done, I don't think he would have been castigated in the same way. So I think in terms of business, Trump was obviously uh, uh, came up with some good policies because if you are a business person and corporation tax is extraordinarily high, it definitely chokes off growth. So uh, whether those kind of tax regimes will be maintained and then from the rights viewpoint, they don't want to see an agenda where Everything is about uh, inclusivity, but not about responsibility, uh, which is very anti-Republican sentiment. But I think this particular president is going to be much more focused on trying to be pragmatic, inclusive, factual. Um, I think he's going to try to uh, re-engender uh, uh, relationships all around the world and I thought it was interesting that he's saying that his first visit will be to Britain because I think Joe Biden's known as not necessarily being the greatest fan of Britain because he has a, a great allegiance to the island of Ireland. Um, but he's showing an understanding of the historical relationship between the two countries, whereas Trump talked about that and then obviously was highly critical of the leaders, which kind of doesn't go down very well here. So that's a flavour. And I hope it gives you some sort of kind of context between the two regimes. But I do feel that this is a new era and it is 
kind of reflective of where society's going. It, it, we do need to find ways to collaborate and protect each other the best we can, but it's not going to be easy for him, especially on the home front. So if you'd like to have a one-to-one -one with me, please check out that link below. Or if you'd like to order your 12-month forecast and character analysis, get 30% off. Really get embracing more serious astrology, please see the link below. But for now, take care, good luck, and goodbye.